Let's go to Nita Everly from DRC. Thank you. Um, thank Af you very much. From Africa's uh, second largest Army. country. Absolutely. The Democratic Republic of Congo. And uh, frankly, they say that uh, if there is any country that is incredibly, ridiculously wealth in terms of anything you can think about, it is that country that borders with nine different others. Absolutely, absolutely. First of all, I would like to apologize for being late. I just got stuck in a wrong elevator. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm in this place. But anyway, um, uh, like everybody here said, you, uh, unfortunately, ne next week should have been one of the biggest week for Africa, especially for African people and mm. African diaspora mm. who have been fighting in this country to actually have Africa on the agenda yes. of the United States for the first time. Yes. But unfortunately, when you look at the, the, the agenda of that summit or the people that have, that have been invited in the summit, you kind of lose hope, hope of something positive coming out of it, especially for the people inside Africa. For the Republic of the Democratic Republic of Congo, which has been a war only in the east part of Congo for all, almost 20 years, there's no way Joseph Kabila should have been one of the invited. Because when the summit started, um, they were organizing the summit, we all was hoping that President Obama will bring the issue that people have been telling them, especially in DRC, mm. there's absolutely no head of state or no uh, uh, representative or st uh, secretary of state or anybody that has been part of the Bush administration or Obama administration that didn't visit Congo and witness by themselves what has been happening, especially the eastern part of the Congo, or especially that what will have been happening to the women and children in the eastern part of Congo. Then those people come here, they know exactly what the people want the United States to do for the Congo. But inviting Kabila just tell the people that they didn't they were not listening at all and that the, the government is working for their own interests instead of the interests of the people. First of all, the summit says that it's for the investments. The United States was trying to invest in the DRC, I mean, in Africa in general. But that's not even the truth at all, because if you look at where the United States have been investing in Africa, it's mostly militaries. They're training the military, they, they, they're arming those same people who are uh, 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 oppressing their own people to remain in power forever. These are 47 president that came that will come here next week. I don't think that more than half of them should even be part of the the delegation, even just to come and, and, and tourists as a tourist in the United States, because they all are almost the same as uh, Mugabe that they didn't invite or Bashir. Because if we say Bashir has committed genocide, or oh, too many people have died in in Sudan. In DRC, the, the militia that came with Kabila, including the, the, the foreign power that brought Kabila into power, killed six million people. Why is it those people being invited? It's a, a, actually a question that everybody's asking themselves. And the and, and United States say they don't um, do business with corrupt countries. African countries, especially the DRC, is one of the most corrupt countries in this planet. Uh, the budget of DRC is about six billion dollars. Forbes just published uh, an article uh, detailing that Kabila's personal wealth is fifteen billion dollars. Mm -hmm. When the country depends all, uh, more than half of its budget from the international community, it's insane. So we're saying here, we really, as African, especially African diaspora, we miss that opportunity that to make Africa a better place for everybody. And we shouldn't stop here. We should continue to pressure the administration. The promise he has made to the African people that he's going to um, uh, support strong institutions and know the, 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 the strong men that all of them trying to change the constitution to remain eternally. Kabila is only 40, yes, 43. Sir. And if he remain in power, he will stay longer than Mobutu ever could, could stay. Nita, yes. there is a saying that uh, every country has got its own national interests. Absolutely. Correct? Absolutely. So what is wrong with the United States, for example, frankly, emphasizing accessing or having unfettered access to, for example, minerals, 
or whatever it needs that is a reflection of its vital national security interests. For example, your country. Uh, I recall that uh, the bombs that were dropped on Nagasaki and Hiroshima in Japan, guess where the um, uranium came from? On the Katanga in Congress. Hmm? That's all. <laughs> guess where cotton comes from? Most of the cotton that uh, is used in cell phones is used in video phones, x-ray, you name it, what have you. Where does most of it come from? But that's exactly the point. Because it's coming from the DRC where the government is, is not existent and where all the minerals are traded by militia and militia men, now we're calling uh, the, uh, the, the blood cotton and we're calling the cell phone as a bad thing, which is supposed to be a good thing both for the world and the Congolese who live on top of those minerals. But today, uh, we have to uh, 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 have expert and go and define good cotton and bad cotton and this cotton. If Congo is at peace, and if the, the United States uh, 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 will support strong institutions, strong uh, minister of, of, of interior or finance or all that, then they can go and get the mineral in the legal way, the proper way, so the United States companies don't have to explain themselves where they find the cotton. I mean, it's a vicious cycle. Why would you want to do vicious cycle where the line to better life for everybody is so straight? That's why we tell the United States, you want uh, your, gov your, uh, your company to invest in DRC. We have many, many things to offer the world. Then we do it right. We do it through an institution. We do it through a, a legal president, because Kabila is not even legal, because he didn't win the election. No, we do but it he was voted. He was <laughs> elected. <laughs> By the Congolese people? By some place, 102% of the people. In some <laughs> whatever, whatever percentage it is, the fact, of, the fact of the matter is he's considered to be a legitimately elected president of the Democratic Republic of the Congo. That's what we're saying. When Even the president of South Sudan. <laughs> exactly. Then why is Bashir not invited? We'll tell you. Why is Bashir not invited and Kabila invited? That's not fair. Uh, no, I'm talking about <laughs> Salvakir. Salvakir is here Salva also. Yeah, Salvakir. Yeah. Yeah. What about the fact Salva that uh, your country also happens to be, frankly, the epicenter of yes. industrial diamonds? Mbujimai. Yeah. I have been to Mbujimai, but you cannot frankly even think that uh, that place has an economy based even on sweet potatoes. Mm -hmm. And yet when you go to Manhattan, you go to Park Avenue, mm -hmm. you see all those diamonds. Yeah. You go to London, Oxford mm -hmm. Street, you go to Tel Aviv, you, you, you see all these things. Mm -hmm. You go to Antwerp. That's a tragedy. And you say, what is this? But is this, frankly, the responsibility of the United States of America, of the State Department, of the White House, or is it the responsibility of the Congolese people themselves on oh, the ground, really? I mean, it's, the Congolese have been responsible. They actually try to be responsible. Look at Mobutu's era, 32 years in power. Every time there were a rebellion, guess who came and assist Mobutu to remain in power? They all send military, right. they all send army to support the dictator. So they remain there and oppress the people as much as you want. You know, the biggest, um, actually in my country, the biggest uh, weapon of war in DRC has been famine and rape. So they using a really uh, a very vicious a way of keeping people oppressed so that the beneficiary of the wealth remain within the, the international community, uh, uh, the companies that are international, and then the leaders who are uh, in power. Because the people, <coughs> as long as the people don't have the way of fighting back because they have nothing to eat and they have nowhere to live and their family is broken, it's really easy to maintain that instability forever. And that's what is happening in DRC. 20 years of war. Okay? We, we just talking about Boko Haram, where they uh, 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 kidnapped 200 women. But in DRC, we have sex slaves for more than 19 years. There's one woman, they just, she just ran away from Kony. She's been enslaved as a sex slave by Kony for 17 years. There's many, many, many of those women crying for peace and crying for somebody to look into this story. But nobody talks about it. It's only a little piece of information that you see in the newspaper or, in the, uh, or in, on TV telling you a little bit of the story, but not the whole story, so you don't understand exactly what's happening. 
Okay. If the American would like to help DRC, we all have told everybody they have to work with the people to bring sustainable peace for everybody. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you.